Welcome back, everyone. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, with Bob Lilibate with theCUBE Research. We're here to wrap up with a Q&A with the Juniper executive, what they've heard and what we talked about in the sessions. We've got a great panel here. Praveen, Manoj, A.E. and Raj, welcome to this distinguished panel. Thanks, gents. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see you, John and Bob. Awesome. Well, look, let's get started. I want to, Manoj, maybe you can take the first question. I wonder if you could maybe discuss what's motivating organizations to run their AI cluster, clusters on premises instead of just using cloud hosted models? Uh, I feel there are multiple drivers. First off, let's start with cost. Uh, if you look at getting things up and running quickly, go to the hyperscaler, right? Get started with cloud as soon as possible. And uh, startup cost is very minimal, so it kind of makes sense. But quickly, when you get to scale, the cost can exp you know, exponentially grow. So for instance, you know, one of our customers, web scale customers, you know, quickly realized that if they want to do a large scale model, they have to go on-prem, they have to do it on their own rather than depend upon, depending upon the hyperscalers. More recently, ACG Research came out with a study which said over a period of three years, doing on-prem costs half as much as going to cloud. So cost is a big driver. Yeah. But cost is not the only driver. Right. If you look at uh, geopolitically across the world, what, what's happening, you know, data privacy is a big thing. You know, one of our large customers, again, a, a retail customer who wants to do some AI for online analytics, they decided, okay, start with public cloud first, but they quickly moved to private cloud okay. for both their inference as well as you know, large scale training, both parts. So we see data privacy becoming a big thing. People want to protect their domain, their individual unique secret sauce as much as possible, so there is that. And the big thing is sovereignty. I'm not even calling data sovereignty because yeah. you know, data sovereignty is there. Definitely people want to keep data in the country. But now, especially given the geopolitical tensions, the question is, do you want to depend upon a hyperscaler which is from a country which is not very friendly to you? Right? So there is a lot of moment, momentum going on with every country, every sovereign nation trying to build their own secret sauce because this is the new arms race. Yeah. You know, AI is the new race. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And it, and it goes to that model of people are moving AI to where the data is instead of having it in a centralized location. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I call it cloud fatigue. There's a cloud fatigue that's driving this. Got it. Well, let's get into the cloud. One of the things that's clear in this event we saw and we heard was cloud and distributed computing is now the standard. That's clear and it's evolving with Genevieve. Things are changing. So I want to ask how, will, with AI being distributed across public clouds and enterprise data centers and then the edge, how do you guys see AI following that pattern? Is it going to go hybrid cloud? And if not, what would it be if it's hybrid cloud? What's Juniper's role in that environment? Maybe AE, you can take this one. Uh, thank you. Um, it's actually an interesting question. Manoj touched upon uh, you know, data sovereignty, data privacy, and things like that. The hyperscalers have started with learning as a service, and they're building it out. And there are a lot more emerging, what we call as emerging hyperscalers in geopolitical regions where they're trying to host the data within that region. Not only that, people are extremely paranoid and concerned about data privacy. So they are looking at ways and means to actually do that. And if it comes out, like what Manoj said, cost effective to actually do it on-prem, those are emerging more and more as we see people build out data centers on-prem with AI clusters for not just learning, but also for inference. Inference is something that needs to be very, very close to where the user and the edge is. And so you're going to have a lot more of that actually pushed out to the edge. What does this mean to the big architecture? You're going to be building it out in some form of a hybrid cloud where you're going to have private clouds where you need to actually exhaust the resources within the private cloud, you want to leverage some of the elasticity of public learning as a service, and then do it back again within realms of what security, data privacy, and all of those things that are important for you. That's exactly how people are going to actually act on it. We here at Juniper, we're really excited about this because we have our products and solutions that really cater to this. AI is exploding. You can see human beings and AI is going to be more and more hungry for bandwidth. We're the first to release 800 gig products in the world. That's because that caters to AI and large AI clusters, not just for learning, but also for inference as we build out these solutions in a very effective way. Excellent. So for a lot of the early adopters, 
integrated solutions have been their choice, you know, and especially using InfiniBand networking, right? It's all that single throat to choke. I'm wondering, Raj, if you can discuss as the market shifts to more open architectures, open ecosystems, how will those best of breed solutions be supported? So I think uh, that's a very interesting question uh, because if you go back in history with our high tech industry, we have seen it again and again. I would like to take you back to server ecosystem in 90s when we had vertically integrated systems from Sun Microsystems, Apollo, IBM, which were considered best because they were optimized for that particular usage. So people were very skeptical when Linux was introduced in about 93 uh, because now it started creating a horizontal platform, chips coming from Intel, platforms coming from someone, operating system, software. But that led to multiple players being able to build and deliver uh, best of solutions yeah. because you have choice now of multiple components at every lane in the stack. Right. You integrate them and optimize them. And that's what led to now the modern server-based uh, data centers that hyperscalers have. Similar thing is likely ha uh, happening now with the AIML systems. You have a vertically integrated architecture. You could argue it provides the best solution, which is very expensive. But with the introduction of open ecosystem, where you start providing components from different players and still integrating them to provide the best of breed solutions, Creating competitive environment for multiple players to do that leads to a better industry outcome. For example, at Juniper, we have taken a lead in building this lab we call Ops for AI, which is an example of demonstrating the effectiveness of an open ecosystem. In that lab, we have GPU clusters from multiple vendors. We have network fabric. We have other components which come from third parties. Integrated together, we are able to demonstrate that we can achieve job completion times for training as good as or better than the vertically integrated system. So the future is bright. I think the open ecosystem model will allow us to deliver best of bridge solutions at lower cost, more choice, and pace of innovation being uh, accelerated. Yeah, and I think one of the things that I like about what you were talking about is the fact that you're validating that open ecosystem That's and it. you've got the labs. People can actually come, see it, see. taste it, right, That's feel it, it, understand what it's doing. And, the, and it's those validated designs that are really going to help accelerate it. And that's the important thing. It's not just an open ecosystem that customers have to figure out how they're going to put everything together. Right. Juniper's doing the hard work in their lab to be able to put it all together, validate that everything works together as it should and performs as it should. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we are inviting customers to bring their own models. Correct. And try them out. So it's yeah. you know it's a very open ecosystem in that sense. Yeah. So open, distributed, heterogeneous. Absolutely. That's, that's yeah. the architecture. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I think can't bet against that, in my opinion. There's been a lot of discussion regarding power and sustainability, especially with the GPUs. Given the data centers consuming about three percent of the world's electricity, AI is going to drive this much more. Everyone's seeing. It, everyone's talking about it. What can Juniper do to help drive greater power efficiency? Praveen, why don't you take this one? Yeah, thank you, John. As you said, uh, AI clusters are power hungry. Even though networking is a small piece of it, everything adds up pretty quickly. So we at Juniper have taken a holistic approach, starting from the chip level, the system level, the network level, and even at the monitoring level. So let me just go one by one. First at the chip level, as we are designing the chips or our custom ASICs, we are making sure they are they are consuming minimal power, so that's one part. Now, as we build the systems out of those, you are connecting optics. Optics consume a lot of power. So, as Juniper, we are the first vendor who have invested in all potential optics power-saving technologies: CPO, LPO, LRO. A lot of acronyms, but think about it. These are all different technologies trying to save power consumed at the optics level. Now, when we build the systems, you have unused ports. Can we shut those down? We have unused line cards. Can we shut those down to save power? So all of that we are doing as part of our technology stack inside Juniper. Now, once you build the system, you want to cool that system. So we have invested into liquid cooling and also similar technologies. So power, cooling, both go hand in hand. So now also, like, let's look at it from the monitoring perspective. So now your fabric is running. You submitted a workload, it failed. It means after resol re resolving the failure, you need to resubmit the workload. So you consume double the power, right. right? So we have at Juniper our Appstra solution, which is looking at the network, looking at the congestion parameters, looking at whether 
all the load is correctly balanced in the network, whether it's optimizing all the paths or not. And in addition, proactively looking at the failed components or potentially the components which can fail in future and isolating all that to give you the holistic feedback. Ultimately, the goal here is GPUs are so damn expensive. Can we make sure that GPUs are fully utilized with minimal power? Awesome. Praveen talked a little bit about, uh, you know, auto-tuning, uh, talked about shutting off parts of the ASIC, parts of the, you know, opti uh, optics, parts of ports, but there is also a network-wide aspect, right? You know, sometimes there are paths which are not in use, so you can shut them off. Yeah. So using yeah, traffic absolutely. engineering and routing protocols, you can actually turn off parts of the network which That's is not being in use and save power. So it's not just about power efficiency, but also avoidance of avoidance innovation. Of yeah, and I love the fact that you're you're going deeper into these AI environments and getting visibility into them, so organizations can be far more proactive and even predictive, in helping to avoid power consumption or to avoid congestion and other things like that. So that's yeah, great. Absolutely, to Manoj's point, we're actually working with standards for control plane protocols to enable this and make it more and more efficient. And this is something that we are uniquely participating and yeah. driving that in standards bodies, IETF, yeah. like IETF and others. Yeah. Guys, congratulations, open, distributed. Um, we can see this model merging, you know, certainly heterogeneous networking and computing. Gen AI is a special moment in time and people are gonna seize the moment and thanks for coming on this panel. Uh, the Junipers seize the AI moment. Thanks for watching, I'm John Furrier, Bible Liberté. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.